What's up guys, it's your favorite TV coach. Welcome back to another client before and after video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about kind of pitch of the club shaft on the backswing and how in this particular swing, it translated into a steepening motion on the downswing and then another rerouting on the downswing and it gets a little confusing. So without further ado, let's go do this thing. So welcome back to the channel guys. You guys are new to Kiwi Golf Japan. We do a bunch of videos like this every single week. So what you gotta go do is hit that little red subscribe button Smash the like button, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this client's before and after videos. And as always, hit that little bell notification. You guys will get notified every single time I drop a video. So like I said in the intro, this particular before and after video, we're gonna really focus heavily on the pitch of the club shaft throughout the backswing, how it was moving in the before swing, and then ultimately how it started to react on the downswing, and then kind of some of the uh, movements it had going on, which ultimately caused this player to start hitting pretty massive hooks. So let's go take a look at the before swing and we're gonna really specifically look at position two and just a little bit after position two and kind of see how the club shaft moved based off the before and after swing. Okay, so as we take this player to position two, we're gonna see that the club head at position two is gonna be slightly behind the hands. And if you guys have watched our webinar recordings, you guys know that we obviously like to see it in line with the hands. If anything, maybe a little behind, a little in front's okay, but this club head is getting to the point where it's too far behind the hands for our preference. It's gonna have to cause the player to do something like steepening the club shaft somewhere on the backswing to get into the correct position. That little steepening motion, depending on when he does it, how much he does it, could actually lead his this player to actually almost get crossed and then steep on the transition. So we're gonna highlight that here in a sec, but let's go take a look just after position two, because this is one of the most important positions on the backswing, in my opinion, with the club shaft pitch. Okay, so just after position two, what I want to kind of highlight, and this is this position right here, is look at the pitch of the shaft relative to the forearm. This is one of the key checkpoints that I'm looking for when I'm trying to take a look at the club shaft pitch on the backswing. And as you can see that it's below, quite drastically, the forearm. So if I go draw a blue arrow, this would be obviously going through the forearm, and this would be more so the preference of pitch of shaft that I like. However, this player before, we can see pretty clearly that the pitch of his club shaft was underneath that form. Now because of this, what we're going to start finding, and I'm going to actually draw a little uh, diagram here so you guys can kind of see what I'm uh, talking about. We're going to see that from this position now, the club shaft pitch is actually going to start steepening to the top of the uh, backswing here. And this is actually going to lead to a transition move to where this player is actually going to get pretty steep in transition. And then he's also gonna reroute a little later in the swing, which we'll obviously try to highlight here later in the analysis here. But this is the motion right here. Can you see that? So right about from here, he had started to steep in the club shaft. Not, not so much though. However, pretty much right in transition or right before transition, kind of right around there, we're seeing that this club shaft is now starting to steep in here. And then as we start down, we're going to see that the club shaft is starting to get into a pretty steep position here. And then from here, we're seeing as we get kind of into position five, now he's trying to start to flatten the shaft, right? So what happened was in transition, he was flat uh, right before it. Then it started to steep in this way. And then he obviously tried to start laying it down. And then all this kind of combined to have this player kind of come into a position where the club head was stuck behind the hands. He was swinging a little bit too far in to out. And then if we look at his exit, we'll notice that the sweet spot kind of exited pretty straight here. As it hit the ball, it kind of moved off to the right, if anything, that sweet spot. And that actually caused this golf ball to go low and left. And so he ended up hitting a hook shot here, low left hook, as opposed to obviously a draw shot, which is what he wanted to do. So to kind of wrap up that little section there, starting right after position two, right around here, this was really causing this player, I personally think, to really not control the pitch of the shaft, starting to steepen it when he didn't want to, and then he had to do all sorts of things on the downswing to try to catch up, and it just didn't work out. So let's go take a look at the after swing. I'm gonna show you um, what we did to control the pitch of the shaft earlier on in the backswing, and then you're gonna see that the transition looks a whole lot different. It's really interesting. Okay, so we go take it up to position two. So the first thing you're gonna notice if we kind of compare the two position twos, the first one, on the left of your screen, the club head was, yes, behind the hands. Now we're seeing that obviously the club head is now in front of the hands, right? So the way we did this for this particular player was we actually focused on more radial deviation or wrist hinge earlier in the swing, which again, remember, position two is when the club shaft is parallel to the ground. 
So if I hinge my wrist really early, that means the club shaft's gonna get parallel to the ground earlier, which means that the club head's probably got a great chance of being outside the hands of anything, right? So typically people who get the club head too far outside the hands are hinging too early. People who get the club head behind the hands tend to not hinge enough, and that's why the club head and then ultimately the club shaft starts to get behind them. So this player, we added on more radial hinge and lo and behold, he's now in the proper position. So that was a great change. Now let's go take a look at that just after P2 position. Remember before he was here, let's go take a look at after now. Okay, so if we take a look at after and I'm gonna draw a blue arrow for the after so you can kind of see the point of reference here and then I'm gonna draw a yellow line for the before and then you're gonna see that there is, yes, a massive difference. Now, the one on your right of your screen, the after, ideally I'd like to see him a little bit steeper and let me kind of move this arrow into the correct spot. Right about here is kind of my preference when it's pretty much through the middle of the forearm. He's a little bit flat of that, but he did make a huge change and also he did end up getting the transition where he wanted to, so a little bit tiny bit off, but I wasn't gonna nitpick at this point in the lesson. I was pretty happy with the changes that he had already done. Okay, so from here, with this new pitch of shaft position, from here now, he's actually gonna start almost flattening through the rest of the swing as opposed to steepening. And you're gonna see that here in the transition. As we start to get up to the top of the swing, let's notice how he starts the transition now. So as he starts the transition, now we're seeing that the club head and club shaft is actually not steepening, right? It's pretty much just kind of laying down. He's actually not doing any of this. He's kind of just taking what he already has and just kind of lowering it, which is really what I like to talk about and what I really like to see with shalling. However, again, some people obviously might need to feel this. I totally get that. But in real life, I like to just see pretty much a traditional top of swing position and then the player just lower it, right? Again, that's my preference. You don't have to do that, but you can see that this player is doing a great job of my preference. If we take a look at the before swing, again, we're going to see that he was steepening the club head, right? So he was doing this before. After now, he's doing this. So, to kind of wrap things up, what are the major take-home points of this video? I think for a lot of you guys out there who are struggling, uh, you might even heard it called like a wobbliness at the top of the swing, or if you see your club head kind of doing something very similar to this uh, client's golf swing, I would focus in on your P2 and just after P2. Whenever I try, tend to focus on that with clients who have that kind of wobbly issue or that steepening issue, and we fix it, they tend to get rid of that steepening issue. It almost pretty much goes right away. So again, to fix that, from position two, if the club head is behind the hands, which for most people who are probably steepening it, you'll probably see something similar. That means you need to add on more radial deviation earlier on the takeaway. And then from there, right after position two, you need to make sure that you're keeping that radial deviation and you're not trying to churn your wrist too early or else you're gonna get a look like this player and then the club shaft is behind the hands. So again, the checkpoint would be you wanna be more so through the forearm at this position with the pitch of the shaft. And then from that position, then you could start to kind of flatten the club shaft and actually pronate your lead wrist and do all that stuff that I talk about to get into the top of swing position. So that pretty much wraps up this. Also guys, if you wanna see um, all of the checkpoints that I typically talk about in lessons for irons and for drivers, we have webinar recordings down below. Go ahead and check those things out. Also, if you wanna see our process of how we actually change our clients golf swings, and you actually wanna watch like two two hour live lessons and see exactly the step-by-step -step, uh, process we do to change client swings, make sure to go hit up the link down below. You'll also see our Kiwi Coach live lesson webinar product. You can actually see a literal two two hour live lessons. We do everything for you step-by-step. I think you guys will really enjoy that product. But this was an interesting uh, swing case. I think a lot of you guys probably have a similar issue. So make sure to watch this video a few times. Maybe even share it with your friends. Um, I think it's going to help a lot of people. So without further ado, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video.